Operator Sam is back, baby, and I'm here to drop some knowledge on you. This week, our friends at We Are The Mighty put out an article that I would say has some questionable insight. And we're gonna break that bad boy down. To give you a good idea of where this article's going, the title says it all. Four reasons why Marine infantrymen don't need fully automatic weapons. That's a real article from a person that was in the military. Shorthand answer, they do really need them. This article's already full of shit. And wait till you hear the four reasons why they don't. The article begins by saying that the Marines need to win weapon superiority. And I don't know where you went to infantry school, but I've never heard of weapon superiority. I've heard of fire superiority. Fire superiority is the thing. So you're putting more rounds down range so that the bad guy's heads duck down and you can maneuver your element to overtake them. But weapon superiority, I think we've already got that with, you know, nuclear weapons. So we're already there. We don't need machine guns. We've got weapon superiority. Cause that's a thing. Am I dumb? Is weapon superiority a slang term for fire superiority? Or is this article so stupid that it's making me think that my correct assumptions are correct or incorrect? Oh my God, they're already in my head. The next paragraph or two, give you a quick rundown on how an infantry platoon reacts to contact and ends with once they have a fix on the enemy position, they bring the rain with the mortar team. Who says bring the rain? I've heard units called steel rain. I've heard splash out, splash, fire for effect, repeat. I've heard that before, but I've never heard, we need weapon superiority, bring the rain, bring the rain. Chocolate rain. That sounds like something that somebody who's never been involved in that situation would say. Hmm. Yeah, bring the rain. Okay, well, what? We're gonna take a tactical pause right there. What if we can't bring the rain? Huh? What if there's a village or a mosque or some other nonsense there and we can't use a mortar team? We're not gonna bring the rain today, okay? It's sunny and 60 degrees. So, fuck the rain. We have to go in there and maneuver our element with his vehicles or on foot and boom! destroy the target. I can probably count on my two hands the amount of times artillery or mortar teams were used in Iraq from 2006 forward. And you're thinking that you could just rely on your mortar team to just pew, 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 just blowing shit up all around you? This guy can't possibly think that every call for fire or for a gunship to come over is like immediately granted. That request is not granted all the time. Just ask the code of mites. You could be in the shit and you are shit out of luck. Sometimes backup is just you and a gun truck. On top of that, an 81 millimeter mortar's effective range is like 5,500 meters. It's three and a half miles. You think that patrols go past that? I think they do. At the end of the introduction, he goes on to say that the right of fire of a fully automatic weapon system nearly mirrors that of an M4's after a few bursts. They have the same right of fire for the first two seconds. So they're the same. They posted this article. I'm just reading it. Number one, they get trigger happy. What? To quote Bernie Sanders, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Trigger happy being that the infantryman fires off more than the four to six round bursts they're suggested to do in training. What are you, some sort of bureaucratic bean counter? Listen, Lance Corporal so-and-so, I don't care how many enemies there are over there, Four to six rounds, man. Controlled burn, you know what? We're gonna make this a bolt action automatic. That's what we're gonna do, cause that makes sense. We need a bolt action automatic rifle just to settle down these idiots. When we go over seven, you're gonna start tattling on us to dad? Oh, Senator so-and-so, when I was in a firefight in Afghanistan, these Marines were letting like 30 round bursts go and it was just not pragmatic. What are the targets sending 15 dudes and they're 50 meters away. You just gotta plat, 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 and hope that they're just like, oh, <laughs> they're shooting over there, and those four to six rounds are very effective, so we're gonna, we're gonna go that way. Or, do you think that raining down 30 rounds is gonna put their fucking heads down? I can imagine the saw gunner now. Guys, I have to stop. I fired six rounds. Brat. Okay, cool, hold on. I'm firing it as fast as I can. 
Bad, bad, bad. I did seven. I gotta wait a minute. I got timeout. I'm in a timeout. It only goes downhill from here. Timmy goes on to say, hey, shooting rounds is fun, but accurate rounds are more fun. You sound like a virgin camp counselor trying to tell the kids, you know what's cooler than sex and drugs, huh? Staying up late and doing your homework. He ends it by saying, unfortunately, infantrymen just get too trigger happy and lose their military bearing, firing too many rounds and wasting ammunition. Oh, what? Oh, oh, I didn't know that firing more than six rounds was losing my military bearing. I thought I was in a firefight fighting for my life and the buddies to the left and right of me, but my military bearing is of the utmost importance in this moment. And I lost it. I lost it when I went to seven rounds. I know it's not a good debate strategy to tell your opponent to shut up, but shut up, Tim. Number two is negligent discharges can be worse. How many negligent discharges charges have you seen in your entire military career coming from an automatic weapon? I can tell you far less than that of a rifle. Oh yeah, he says that a negligent discharge because it's a belt-fed weapon is going to spray a whole shit ton of bullets in a general direction. Maybe, just maybe, there could be some sort of training to teach us how not to do that by, I don't know, Properly loading and unloading the weapon, keeping the bolt ridden forward until you need to fucking rack one back and send that thing flying, because it fires from the open bolt position. But I'm guessing you probably already knew that, right, Tim? I bet. There's a risk with everything. I could drink and drive and run over a bunch of kids in a school bus that just sends it hurtling down a cliff to their doom. But you know what? I could mitigate that hazard by not drinking in excess, getting an Uber ride home, or not getting shit face hammered at 8 in the morning when the kids are going to school. That same thing can be said for the saw. Again, by having the bolt board until you need to rack it back and fire off some rounds downrange. Keeping the safety on, or you know what? Keeping your booger hook off the bang switch. Number three, barrel changes. Barrel changes are why we shouldn't have automatic weapons, Tim. When grunts get too trigger happy, their weapon systems can overheat. To combat overheating, they change out the barrels. And that takes precious time that you can't get back. Now there's a possibility here, Tim, that you might be overlooking. And that could be that the barrels are overheating because they're in a firefight and they need to expend that amount of rounds. I know, I blew your mind. Holy shit. Wow, where did I come up with that? These weapon systems come with two barrels just in case you end up getting stuck in some hairy situation and the barrel goes, oh, ah, it, that thing's cherry hot. We can't fire anymore. What are we gonna do? Oh shit, we've got another barrel. Click, clack, oh, the hot one, <gasps> the new one. Click, clack, cold weapon to bop, 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 and you're back in business, baby. Oh, but. <laughs> These barrel changes are taking too much time. How are we gonna get that time back? Good thing we can change the barrels on our M4s. Oh, wait a second. You can't change the barrel on your M4. It's almost as if your M4 has a thinner, lighter barrel that's not meant to take a large amount of rounds going through it. Wait for it. Like the automatic weapon systems are. Oh my god, it's like it's designed for a high volume of rounds. Guys, it's designed for a high volume of rounds. I think I'm poking holes in Timmy's arguments. Oh god, I'm getting lightheaded. I think the dumb is finally affecting me. Oh god. Maybe the extra barrels are for weapon superiority. Did you think of that, Tim? The extra barrels can count as like two weapons. So now we're winning in weapon superiority. Weapon superiority, it's a word. Side note, have you ever tried to fire your M4 on burst with a magazine in it? That, that, that thing will jam. You will jam up. You ever try to fire a saw with a magazine in it? That thing jams up every fifth or sixth round. There is no hope to that. So yes, we need belt-fed weapons and extra barrels to change out, Timmy boy. So we can gain fire. Fire superiority. And finally, he states, it can lower accuracy. What is this, Call of Duty? Are we running around with the bolt-action sniper rifle just no-scoping people? This thing ain't a sniper rifle. It's for area targets. You're spraying at a group, an area. So yeah, there's gonna be some misses. But because of that, you can get the guys with the long guns out there. 
comb taking down those turds. This is an effective tool and psychological weapon, projecting sound and barking fire, striking fear into the hearts and poop into the pants of our enemies. You ever hear a 249 or a 240 just go off for like 30 seconds? Everybody goes, oh shit. What's the background of Timmy, huh? What is Timmy's background? He was a Navy corpsman. So this guy knows everything about automatic weapons and small squad tactics of an infantry element. Because he bandaged up dudes that were shot. So he knows everything about mortars and the accuracies and all that shit. God damn it, Navy. We gave you Osama bin Laden because we felt bad for you. And you're still pulling shit like this. Why don't you go hop in your blue digital camis so then you can fall overboard and nobody can find you. I love we are the mighty. They're great. They're amazing. It's infotainment. I get smarter and entertained every time that I read or watch one of their articles or videos on the internet. Hell, they're half the reason why the U.S. military has sexual harassment briefings every other week. I'm going to call you Pogi Bay because you are a snack. And I want to carry you around in my cargo pocket all day. But what editor read this and said, oh yeah, this makes sense. But you missed the mark here, mighty. In a time where traditional media is all but trusted, Veterans come to you for answers. We come to you for questions we didn't even know we had. I want you to continue your quality contributions to the veterans, but this video is clickbait at the least and political pandering at the worst. The only thing this article does is give ammunition to those people who have no idea what firearms are so they can say, oh, but look, these veterans don't even think that they should have automatic weapons because we do need those things. And putting out any information saying otherwise is a lie. Because war is hell. But it's even worse so if you don't have the tools to get the job done. Now I'm going to end our time together by reading a quote from my old Special Forces Lieutenant Colonel. His response to the article was, Ah! Tell us to my father-in-law, who was overrun by the Chinese in Korea. He was the assistant gunner. At sundown, they attacked. They fired half the night till the gunner got hit. They continued until no more ammo was with them. At dawn, he linked up with five other survivors and started evacuating back to friendly lines. I imagine when we meet the Chinese again, or the Russians, full-auto weapons might come in handy. 